to another episode of Murder Dictionary Podcast. My name is Brianna, and that is Kelly. It's Jay Z's birthday. It is. Yeah. Happy birthday, Jay Z. Happy birthday, Ho. <laughs> <laughs> so, before we get started on this very special day, <laughs> buckle up, because Metro is bringing you the best deal in wireless. Switch to Metro and get your choice of two awesome free phones from top brands like Samsung and LG with huge HD screens and tons of memory for all your pics and videos. So hurry into Metro and get your awesome free phones only at Metro. Plus sales tax and activation fee. Requires port and of eligible number not currently active on T-Mobile Network or active on Metro in past 90 days. Limit four per account or household. Restrictions apply. See store for details and terms and conditions. We wanted to remind you of a couple things that are going to be in our description and show notes. If you want to skip any parts of the story that are particularly gruesome, we will have timestamps in our description so you can skip those. Um, if you don't want to, don't worry about it. Just don't look. <laughs> just close your eyes but not your ear holes and then so don't do anything yeah just just act normal <laughs> just get through it <laughs> <laughs> just clench something i mean like a steering wheel or kegels ass kegels exactly <laughs> you'll get through it and then also in our description we're going to have some links for resources for domestic violence for mental health CPS, um, all sorts of things. So if you're in need of any resources, we have a few recommendations in there. So it's just easy. And what else? We have merch. We have got the link for our Threadless in there. And that's going to be murderdictionary.threadless.com. So we've got a bunch of t-shirts. We've got four different designs. We've got mugs, iPhone cases, housewares, Whatever you need for your treat yourself Christmas list, you know. I uh, I chipped that uh, my favorite mug from. The oh of yeah, Death, so I might need a new. Mug. You need a replacement. Can I just put a sticker over my face and then just have your face? <laughs> <laughs> I just want a mug with you on it. <laughs> that would be so weird. Who's that? That's my friend Brianna. <laughs> I love her. We've been friends for a long time. She works here too. <laughs> you can catch her on Sundays. <laughs> that would be super creepy and I'm all for it. <laughs> I really want that feeling that you're going to murder me to be more overwhelming. <laughs> I'm going to put Gary Busey's face over mine. (laughs) I've never been happier about anything (laughs) in my life. That sounds beautiful. I think we should do that for both of our faces and make a completely different merch line. (laughs) I'm just going to say that's my mom and dad. (laughs) It's our family photo. (laughs) It's where I get my blue hair from. So, Threadless, you can get all of those things. You can cover up our faces with all sorts of crazy shit, which is awesome. We would highly recommend that. And that's going to be on Threadless. Link is in the description. And then the last thing that you'll find in there is the link to our Patreon. So, we've got a few new Patreon supporters this week. So, we wanted to say thank you to Amanda, Tammy, Meloderberg, Diane, and Robert. Amanda, Meloda Burger, mm-hmm. um, Tammy, Tammy, remember Tammy, mm-hmm. Jesus, Diane, <laughs> so close, so close, Diane, oh, Diane, Diane's now Jesus, mm-hmm. get that changed legally, <laughs> and then the last one is Robert, Robert, yeah, and then we have different levels for our Patreon. So you can get some small merch items there. There's access to bonus episodes. And then also there's one option where you get to choose a case. And so Robert is one of the people at the level that gets to choose a case. What? And coming up in a few weeks, we're going to drop some Robert case on you. Yes. And it's really fucking good. Just from the little bit that I read about it so far. So I'm looking forward to that. But... However, tonight, we're going to do Letter U, Part 1. Ooh. And you're going to break it down on some university murders for me. I did Unitarian. Oh, shit. (laughs) Okay, let me stop recording. (laughs) Yes. Okay, university murders. So um, this is in Canada. Sweet. Yes. Okay, so this story is about Mark Lapine. 
let uh, let me just give a heads up. These are French names, and I just suck. act like you're saying croissant all the time. Croissant. Mar- croissant. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to get you a beret? Would that help? Yes. Can we have a threesome? And a cigarette? <laughs> and, a cigarette? and a threesome? <laughs> Uh, I didn't shave my armpits either. So. Perfect. <laughs> Getting in the spirit, you know? So we are starting off with Mark Le Pin. So he was born October 26, 1964, as Camille Rodriguez Garvey. Great year for murders. 64? Yeah. Wasn't it love? I have no idea. Or racism or something? <laughs> I'm talking out of my ass. <laughs> good year. Good year. <laughs> He was the son of an Algerian immigrant named Rashid Lias Garvey and Canadian citizen Monique Lepin. His father... This sounds like a beautiful person for some reason, but I'm just going off Who? the names. Okay, so the girl's beautiful. The yeah, man's... doesn't that sound nice? Yeah, Pretty. Monique Lepin. Yeah, I know. It's beautiful. Love yeah. it. I get Cali Lepo. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Yours is beautiful, too. You have, like, a little rolling of the tongue action. Mm. No? Okay. I never roll my tongue because I can't do accents right, so I just give up, and I'm like, Brianna Mira. <laughs> <laughs> Mira. <laughs> I could say it better, but I One give day. up on myself. I'll wait for Cinco tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> One day a year I say my name right. All right. So his father, um, his father, Leas, uh, was a mutual fund salesman, so Mark spent his early childhood in Costa Rica and Puerto Rico. Um, wow. Yeah. Uh, his father kind of spent money on things when they went out. He liked, you know, like Don Perignon and just the fancier kind of nice stuff. So they were pretty well off in general, pretty. or he just kind of liked to spend beyond his means? Um, I think they were pretty well off. They, you know what? They weren't poor, but for a while when they were together as a household, I think he could provide. Got um, it. And he did like the finer things. I'm not really sure if he was, you know. Spending money like rappers, but right. you know. <laughs> Happy birthday, Jay Z. <laughs> <laughs> this one's for you, ho. <laughs> so Leas instilled this contempt for women in Mark. He's kind of known for shaping him. Um oh. Leas believed that women had no other purpose in life than serving men. Hmm. Uh, he had his wife Monique work for him as a typist. Um oh, also they moved back to Canada. Eventually, after he was done being a mutual sales fund, they immigrated to Canada and lived um, lived there and basically raised a family. Okay, so they like settled down once they were like, okay, we've been around for a while. Yeah. Now let's take our kid back and be stable. Yeah. Right? And stop popping bottles. Maybe sometimes. Yeah, maybe they should have stayed in Costa Rica. I don't know. <laughs> so he had his wife work for him as a typist. Mm-hmm. He would make her work long hours. He would berate her and hit her if she made a mistake. <gasps> She, um, this would cause her, basically, when she would get hit in the head, it would cause her to be, like, dizzy and stuff like that, and she would have headaches caused from this, so. Yeah, a lot of people are talk about their long-term injuries. Of course, we immediately think of domestic violence as the immediate injury that time, but a lot of people that are domestic violence survivors have very long-term health effects from what they've endured, you know? That's terrible. I bet she she was really good at typing. (laughs) <laughs> or i just imagine like she secretary just... <laughs> make that's yeah it's hard to not think of that movie just yeah. all the time yeah. pretty much <laughs> yeah because i would love that kind of relationship but yeah. just this sounds like not not like don't that hit me in the head just do it consensually yeah. find a chick that's just down to be you know yeah kind of that bdsm submissive type yeah you it's know? really easy and then you don't have to be a complete abusive asshole yeah just ask yeah, Honestly. just like, hey, can I be kind of a dom? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Sweet. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get down. The smackings commence. <laughs> Leas did everything he could to make it known that women were not equal to men. Mm. I thought maybe he should get like a better hobby or some self-confidence. Because right. Because he like, it just seemed like he had nothing better to do than to make her, his wife constantly feel lesser yes. than him. It says more about his self-worth than it does about her, you Which, know, like always. I got an, I they really didn't say any like positive times too. I'm like, where's the honeymoon like days? Right. Like, did you <laughs> there know? Was no information about how they no. were really sweet to each other. Mm-mm. It just went straight to that. No. Nope. Man, that's fucked up. Yeah. Um. So he was physically abusive and verbally abusive to his wife and to his children. 
Um, he'd also uh, hit his family several times to where it would leave visible marks. Specifically, Mark would get a lot, but um, he also thought that after he had hit something it, or if something happened to Leas or his sister, um, Nadia, the mom would console them and try and make them feel better. And Leas would, uh, w- Leas would get upset and say that basically that's how you spoil children. Any type <gasps> of tenderness or loving would be considered spoiling your children um that's terrible yeah he kept them in uh he kept the children in a locked room no yeah which is pretty bad um fuck so basically the the relationship started to fall apart and they ended up going to divorce court yeah you would think that would take a toll on a relationship yeah (sighs) um in the court testimony mark had a bloody nose and basically again he wasn't allowed to be consoled so he just had to kind of deal with it. Um, again, he left him locked in a room with uh, potty, chairs, and orange juice. One time an aunt came over and questioned uh, Monique. Because obviously... It's yeah, like, of the course there's you... people that know something's wrong. Yeah. And the thing I was watching too with this lady, it's like, she's completely describing it. And you're like, are you just... <gasps> like, you're describing everything that's happening to them. Why she didn't you jump in? knew all the details? It's like, yeah, you're locked in a room. These kids... She would say that these kids look miserable. They always had fear on their face. Like, oh why the fuck God. wouldn't you jump in? Like, yes. I guess everyone was just super scared of this guy. I can't imagine being in that position where I know that kind of abuse is going on and not stepping in. I feel like we hear those stories all the time. And I understand people are afraid. Yes. And I understand how that carries weight to a certain extent. Totally. But if you're an outsider, you're just an aunt coming to visit, you can easily report this. You can report it anonymously. Yeah. Like you, There's ways to just get them out you, you are know? an no- anonymous phone call that's like right. star six seven i don't know what they have in canada <laughs> but you can do that shit and i was just kind of disappointed with this aunt but star she- six seven, <laughs> seven. <laughs> <laughs> so this aunt basically questioned monique and um her response was leas wanted the kids gone when he had brunch oh my god first off who the fuck brunches you uh, we brunch hard we brunch bro you don't even know how hard we brunch oh. can't even have kids around we brunch so hard <laughs> like how fucking annoying are your kids like they're not running around don't you go somewhere to brunch are you having an at-home brunch i mean go out that sounds very french honestly it's yeah uh, cuisants and mimosas <laughs> or whatever champagne mimosas. Mimosa? that wasn't french i don't so one person recalled that uh, Leas had once thrown a casserole out the kitchen window and then Monique went outside to go get the casserole and he ended up just beating her up and throwing her against the wall uh, oh several God. times in front of the children. Um, so this basically was a household of violence uh, and a loss of respect for women. So this is kind of forming right. Mark's this is way of his thinking. idea, yeah. Would you think he would... T- uh, I mean, eventually... He ended up dropping his father's name, and he became Mark Levine and took his mom's name, which would make you think that he had more respect for his mom, but he ends up having a serious contempt for women. Well, yeah, of course, if you're seeing that all the time, that's forming your thought processes. Yes, of course, there's plenty of people that go through that and and get very protective of women, Mm -hmm. but there's also, in this case, of course, it seems someone that develops this, this kind of ally with the man Mm -hmm. you know i don't know which is weird because it seems like he hated him too it just seems like he hates everyone well yeah (laughs) there's that (laughs) so um monique because she was working as a typist she ended up um once she'd gotten custody of the kids uh leas ended up moving moving abroad he wasn't around anymore she ended up going back to school which is awesome she wanted to further her career she took classes to become a nurse but it left little time for her children Uh, The family ended up in psychotherapy to learn better methods of expressing and receiving love and affection. Oh, that's cool. Now I feel kind of hopeful, which I know is going to be squashed in 30 seconds. Totally. But, I mean, I think that's good. You know, at least they're trying. They I always like to hear that they're trying to be in the solution, trying yeah. to get help, you know? And usually courts, like during divorces, they'll off, like, you know, they'll tell you to go into therapy or have the kids right. if they're really young. So hopefully that was part of that. Yeah. Um. So Mark ended up living with his mother and his sister, Nadia. After the divorce, um, Monique was appointed director of nursing at a Montreal hospital, which led to the family moving to Montreal um, to a suburb of Pierre Fonds. <laughs> well done 
In junior high and high school, Mark was known as a reserved and a quiet student who received average grades. He excelled in some things, wasn't so good in some. Uh, he would go hunting with his uncles during the summer. Um, around junior high, he, he insisted, I think, uh, on being called Mark and just kind of just distancing himself from his father. Hmm. When he was hunting, was it considered, like, was he possibly overly cruel to animals or no. just normal? Normal hunting. Okay. Yeah. Nothing crazy. Nothing out I'm of the like, range. I'm like, I'm looking for things. Yeah. I looked for cruelty to animals. I yeah. looked for just fascination with, like, knives and stuff. And I think he did. So one thing, um, which will come up. But, okay, so he applied to the Canadian Forces when he was 17 but was denied entry. There we go. During the interview process. They uh, always go for, like, the army and shit like that. Things yeah. where they can get away with being violent. Well, he was really – that's one thing, um, and it's later in this, but his friends recalled that he was really into war, war movies, mm. really into paintballing. I don't know if this was in 2020 hindsight, but his friends would say it's kind of eerie – that how into it he got like he hmm. would just slot he was really good at it. he would slaughter people he just loved going out and shooting and trying to mimic him slaughtering people whoa <laughs> um but that's that's what paintball is honestly it has to be like hindsight right like yeah yeah like, there's a ton of people that do paintball and don't end up murdering someone you, yeah how like do you this? not end up hyped up after paintball you're just like Whoa! <laughs> I got you. You're not really dead. So there's no consequences. <laughs> it's a real life video game. Exactly. Yeah. He should just laser tag and paintball for the rest of his life. That's how this story ends, right? S yeah. Smoke weed and then call it blazer tag. <laughs> <laughs> Swear to God, that's what we used to. Do. We thought we were so cool when we were in high school. <laughs> <laughs> like, check this out. Check this out. Blazer <laughs> tag. <laughs> it was more like <laughs> blazer tag. <laughs> No, really, though, we did smoke weed and play laser tag. Of course. Yeah. yeah. I didn't think that was a joke at all. Oh, okay, I cool. know you well enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the military stated, uh, oh, so in his suicide letter, he said it was because he was antisocial. The military stated that he had been interviewed, assessed, and determined to be unsuitable. Which maybe, I mean, they could have just said antisocial, I guess. Yeah. I, there had to have been something, and it seemed very generic on what they said. They didn't really give... I wonder if that's a tactic to not disappoint people or anger them or kind of affect their psyche. Yeah. Maybe they just want to keep it generic but I, and not take digs at someone like, hey, we don't fucking like you. Yeah. <laughs> you have a chin hair. So <laughs> that'd be my problem. That's you were having a really bad hair day. Yeah. <laughs> so you can't be in our club. I think it could go both ways, though. If it was generic, I, would I uh, – people that – obsess over things oh maybe you know what if you think everything's wrong or what if they never tell you and then yeah you just really want to show people that you are good enough yeah you know? but, hmm. so unsuitable could be anything yeah i just i don't think i'd want to know because then i would obsess about that one thing yeah. instead of obsessing about figuring it out yeah i'd be like oh my god i'm a piece of shit in this one area <laughs> you know like you're not funny I'd be like oh my god <laughs> i'm not <laughs> funny the enough. worst thing you could ever say to me <laughs> <laughs> so um garby uh legally changed his name in 1982 at the age of 18 um he then moved closer to his new college and his mother's work at the hospital this basically this period of adulthood he described as having it had brought him no joy so Whoa. yeah i don't know it's shouldn't weird. that be one of the like coolest times of your life when he's in college you're right? still pretty young but you have more independence yeah. so you're kind of gaining a lot of positivity on that side yeah. because you can do more you're capable of more you're learning more like you're socializing more yeah and there's less supervision you're figuring out who you are exactly and you're about to go to college dude college yeah. is the shit i mean everybody has rough times it's not like a lot of people have a hard time transitioning to college because yeah. there's this huge change yeah. but Change is hard for anyone, but this should be a time where, like, you're making new friends and meeting new people. Yeah, but no joy? Not one that's joy? A, that's a little extreme. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little sad. Um, he started a pre-university course in sciences at CEGEP St. Laurent. CEGEP? You got that. CEGEP. <laughs> I couldn't figure it out, and I wasn't going to say all CG. of it. CEGEP. So, <laughs> uh, he did pretty bad the first semester. 
which is funny because I did the exact same thing in high school. You just you think it's cool, and then you're just okay with not being held accountable for your grades, and then you get your grades, and you're like, oh fuck. Oh, now I have to work. Oh, I hate summer school. <laughs> Too much blazer tag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he improved his um, grades by the second semester. He yeah, he gave the program some time, but eventually ended up switching from the science program into electronics. He was looking more for immediate employment opportunities that a degree or a certificate in electronics could offer compared to just the sciences where you'd have to continue your education. So he was already thinking future and career path. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly Not just like getting through college and that's it. Money. Yeah. He excelled at electronics technology and was described by some of his teachers as a model student. He was quiet, hardworking, and generally doing well overall. Uh, unfortunately, in February 1986, he abruptly stopped attending classes during the last term of his program. Again, same thing what I did in high school. <laughs> so he made it all the way to the end and just stopped going. Yeah, he didn't complete a CEGEP diploma. <laughs> he just gave up? Yeah, exactly That's... what I did. <laughs> the fucking, you wanna... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so but I... look at you now. <laughs> I'm going to cry. <laughs> Yeah, look at me now. You're a swan. A swan. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, after dropping out of school, he basically picked up a kitchen job at his mom's hospital. He got um, he moved out and got his own place with some of his friends. He did have friends too. He didn't have a lot of friends, but he had one like really close friend or a couple of like roommates were his friends. Once he was living alone, he basically applied to um, study engineering at Collier at at Ecole Polytechnique, the well University done. of Montreal. It's um and this is where our shooting takes place. So it said that he basically based okay, so I'm gonna give you the little rundown. He took a bunch of classes. He had to take three classes before he got in to finish his college. But again, so he, there was like prerequisites. prerequisites exactly. Before, okay. They call them pre courses, but he finished some of them. He dropped out of one. It doesn't really say if he he ended up just getting into this college, I believe. I don't know. It's kind of hit and miss on if he – I can't tell if he was actually in the college or wasn't. He was on track to, but he also st- – like they say with um, killers and stuff like that is that failure is one of the mm. the main things that makes it up. So a bad um, childhood failure, and it seems like he just consistently kept going and then failing, kept going and then failing. His roommate said that he read poetry and science fiction novels – He didn't take pleasure in things that most people did, like um, getting really into war movies and war games. It's kind of all he liked besides Hmm. science fiction. His father's contempt for women kind of had spilled over, and he had started making jokes. At this time in his life, he started making jokes about women. So this is kind of where it starts to come out. He never really had it. He was never really violent against women, anything like that. But he started making jokes. I know one joke, there was a drinking and driving ad that he basically spilled fun and put women are uh, women drivers are criminal <laughs> jesus <laughs> uh, wow yeah i don't know i guess he just felt rejected from women um his friend said that he had tried to talk to him about women you know in general he said women give you emotions and he was an emotional guy maybe hmm. he just didn't want to feel that and that's why he kind of stayed away from women he never really had a woman either which is weird how they phrase that. I'm using their phrasing, and it's like women are something to be taken. And right. it's funny that his friends <laughs> never even kind of – Yeah, I never had a woman. Like, <laughs> just, I don't know. I was like, oh, it's French Canadians. I don't know. Um, but that's weird. I mean, you would have think that it would have come out by now. You know what I mean? So something. it's very – something must have triggered in his head to where he started being more outspoken about it, right? Yeah. Because – there's plenty of time that he's had friends and family around for nobody to notice it until this era in his life means that probably it wasn't happening until some sort of event. So maybe he did have someone he was interested in and suddenly they didn't react to him. They weren't into him. Mm -hmm. Maybe he got rejected, whatever it was. Yeah. Or just couldn't get anybody interested in him. And so he just felt like, okay, now I'm going to be outspoken about how it's their fault and not mine. Exactly. It's never his fault and women are always the problem. Right. So his friend asked him, "Um, how would you feel if your mom died? And he said he wouldn't show any emotion. He'd be as hard as stone. Whoa. 
What? Yeah, um, Lapina had a distant I think I'd just stop living. I would just, like, sit in the corner in the fetal position for a good 10 years. (laughs) Like, how could someone be that cold? Yeah, how could you? I mean, I understand, like, grieving and not putting your emotions out there. And my mom didn't cry when her mom died. And it didn't, Mm. I guess it just doesn't happen for some people. Everybody's different, but that's a little bit extreme. But knowing that you're not going to cry and already planning it out. Right, that means you're thinking of it and, yeah. Yeah. It's just no reaction. But I guess... Um, he had, even though he lived with her, she was going to school and stuff. He had a distant relationship with his mom. Uh, she was hot and cold sometimes. People would say she was very loving and then just very cold, kind of like him, and had trouble expressing emotions. It seemed like a constant theme for this family. And he possibly had some resentment just that him and his family were in this situation that was so abusive. Yeah. And his mom, maybe he blamed her yeah. for not getting them out of it. And so that's yeah. why he felt detached from her. She possibly. wasn't locked in a fucking room. Right. With Potty and OJ. Right. And right. Honestly, like that, I would have a lot of resentment. That makes yeah. Sense. But I don't know. This is a recipe for disaster. Do you want to hear the disaster? No. So I guess he was getting unemployment. Um, I think They were saying, like, he obviously didn't finish school. Um, He had given his mom, I think, a present, like, four days before. So it's not like he's completely distant, but he had stopped paying his rent, like, that month. Hmm. That's not a good sign. Yeah, people were saying he really planned it. I know he, um, not to the point where he wrote a manifesto, but he did write a suicide. He had 50 minutes to write a suicide letter, and he ended up writing and expressing his emotions. So this was the first shooting of its kind in Canada. Uh, This was December 6th, 1989. Um, at about 4 p.m., wearing all military-style clothes, Mark headed to Ecoyer Polytechnique with an assault rifle in a plastic garbage bag heading for the engineering school. Huh. Total fucking bummer, too. Just, this is the last day of classes before midterms. Mm. People had been studying. People had been already fucking stressed, dude. Like, Yeah. Ugh. And people are probably a little bit maybe less on their game or less aware because they're so preoccupied with whatever it is, the midterms, the holidays, the everything that there is going on in their life. Maybe they could have been less aware or something. And you're on the cusp of being done for a little bit. Yes. On the cusp of just, so close. you can chill out. Um, It's going so fast. We're already at the murder. Yeah, is that bad? I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I just couldn't find as much on... Blew your load. <laughs> Do we still... It's only we... been 27 minutes. I can... We got... <laughs> you can tell me about each bullet. I have 20 minutes of crying to add it, so... <laughs> and the rest we'll just talk about Riverdale and yeah, we'll stop crying. We could, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can just sing and... The rest I'm down for that. Cool. Turn around. <laughs> <laughs> so... He entered class B311. Uh, A group had just finished a presentation. Um, He brought the assault rifle in, and he ended up separating the men and women and ordered them to split up. Men on the left, women on the right. Oh, no. No, 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 no. no. That's that's not good. Yeah. He ordered approximately 50 men to leave, too. Um, (gasps) Claiming that he was fighting feminism, he shot nine women who remained, killing six and injuring the rest. No. Yeah. So. So he specifically asked all the men to leave. Yeah. Or move to the side. And then, um, yeah, he told, basically told men to leave. A bunch of people got out, but he had split them and then he had started just shooting the women. Um, some men had tried to protect the women. No. And he had ordered them to move. So. I was thinking that if they stepped up and tried to protect them, that he would shoot them too. But he was so dead set on only the women being the victims that he asked the men to move out of the way. He did shoot some men, but I I believe all the ones that were killed were women. Jesus. After he did that, he had moved to other areas of the building, the cafeteria, corridors, another classroom. Total of 14 women, 12 engineering students, one nursing student, and one university employee were killed, and four men and 10 women were injured before Lapine turned the gun on himself. Did When he went into the other spaces, did he also make each classroom separate, no. or mm-hmm. was it only it was the that first one, one? Yeah, he was just shooting women that he saw. Whoa. So the whole place became chaotic. Everyone was running, um, getting in and out, uh, just trying to get away from this place but a three-page letter was found in the pocket of his jacket it was never officially made public 
but was leaked in November 1990 to Francine Pelletier and published in the newspaper La Presse. So when he walked into the class, he pointed, um, we were talking about how he pointed the gun and then he ordered the male students and the professors to get um, on the left and the women on the right. And he, I guess he yelled, I hate feminists. <laughs> before. Whoa. Um, ambulances and news crews had filled the, the entire school the entire school and only one reporter had gotten and this lady had snuck in with the sheriff or the main police guy um and i guess someone had looked at her and was like are you crazy like they're shooting women out here like get the <gasps> fuck out and she was like nope and she just kept going oh my goodness yeah this lady's badass people had described mark as being calm while walking through the halls which seems kind of like a theme like yes people on a mission they're not scurried they're you know they're just calm yeah those She's kind crazy. of like mission manifesto like planned mm-hmm. out methodical killers they just here to do it this job is and... the day and yeah, yeah. it's crazy Ugh. he also had wrote out a hit list of 19 women um apparently of who else he wanted to kill like one was ahead of a, a broadcasting channel mm. stuff like that um so not women that he like knew knew and that he couldn't get to at the engineering okay at the engineering site so that must be so scary to know that you've been on that list oh yeah because then there's so many people out there that do hate women yeah and so then you're like okay am i on another person's list yeah or what if someone else like was like i'll finish the deed oh god so inside the massacre note um which i told you he had like 15 minutes so he was trying to rush to do it part of it said i've decided to send I've decided to send to death the feminists who have always ruined my life. Being rather backward looking by nature, except for science, the feminists always have a talent to enrage me. What? They have a talent to enrage me? Yeah. They're really good at it. What an ass. <laughs> yeah. They want to keep the advantages of women, cheaper insurance, uh, cheaper insurance, extended maternity leave preceded by a preventative retreat while trying to grab those of the men. They are so opportunistic, they neglect to profit from the knowledge accumulated by men through the ages. Will we? (laughs) Sorry, I just hit my own mic. I got so mad. (laughs) Will we hear of Caesar's female legions and female galley slaves who, of course, took up 50% of the ranks of history, though they never existed? A real casus belli. I don't know who that is, but. Whoa. Oh, I hate him so much. He closed his suicide letter by saying, nearly died today. The lack of time, because I started too late, has allowed these radical feminists to survive. Alia Jacta S., which is the die is cast. Whoa. <laughs> what a fucking piece of shit. I hate him. <laughs> he's sucks, too, because he's not, like, I hate to be a dick, like, he's not a bad looking guy. He looked like a <laughs> cute... I, I don't know. I could see more if you... I don't know. I hate to be like that, but I just don't understand how he's never had a woman. <laughs> Quotes. Because he really makes people go crazy, man. <laughs> like, I don't fucking get it. Or lack thereof. Buy some pussy. <laughs> we have plenty of recommendations for fleshlights for 7. you. $7.95 pocket pussy. I don't... $2 Even if you, if you want, want like, you know, the Pinto of pocket pussies, it's real, real affordable. The Pinto will still make you come. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't explode on your dick, though. (laughs) Recalls. (laughs) Yeah, that's kind of... Oh, my God. This this dude is unfucking real That's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, So he did kill himself, but here's some of the stuff with the victims that I found. This front seems to be the most interesting to me, and this is where I might cry. So no, no. <laughs> please just make me laugh. Uh, Papa titty. Buttholes. <laughs> See, that's funny. I like that. You got me. Okay. So policeman Pierre Leclerc was looking through rooms. He had been the one that came in with the reporter. And he was looking through rooms to secure um, the area. And so he was one of the first responders. Yes. Yeah, so okay. he ends up running in with everyone. He's pretty much the main people. The ambulances came too, but the, once the cops came in, they were the only people that were really going inside. Everyone else was kind of fleeing. Okay. Um, his daughter was a student, was an engineering student there. So he comes into the room with the news reporter, and they both stumble upon a man with a rifle on him dead, and a woman in a sweater like a cute christmas sweater or something um and pierre leclerc notices it's his daughter no no yeah so he's the first person to find his daughter butthole i'm gonna cry honestly i can't 
Ugh. Okay. No, are you fucking serious? Yeah, it gets worse. Hold on. That's like a lifetime movie. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Barf cauldron. <laughs> uh, so that news reporter recalls the sweater. There was something crazy about the sweater, right? So she looked at the sweater on the girl. Um, this was Maurice Leclerc, who was his daughter. It basically, um, she was just kind of wondering. She's like, "Who put her in that sweater? Who? What? Mom or dad? Like had." You know, been like, that's a cute sweater or whatever. You should definitely wear that sweater. And her father saw the sweater, and that's how he kind of knew it was her because he remembered she had worn it to supper for, like, Christmas and stuff before, and I bought it specifically for Christmas. No. He, that's how he really knew it was his daughter. They both kind of clinged on, just hung on to the, the sweater, which made me really sad. Ugh. Make it worse, Marisa had di- hadn't died instantly, but she had been shot, so she was screaming out for help. So Mark Lapine heard the cries and decided to come and finish her off with a hunting knife. No, so maybe no. that hunting stuff came back in, but he stabbed her in the heart until she died. He had mumbled, oh shit, before killing himself, which I guess in his like letters and stuff, that's like his favorite phrase and stuff. Because I guess he had saw he only had one bullet left, but oh shit was like his phrase to say. So That's weird. It's really weird. Yeah. Um, so this is more victim stuff. So um, bodies were all kind of put into one room. And this got everybody who kind of didn't find their kid ended up being in the same room together. Oh, so God. they all kind of were waiting for the bad news together. And I can't imagine. I've You see footage of that. And yeah. now that everything's televised, you see parents showing up and trying to desperately get news about their kids. I can't imagine having to go through and. Yeah. And they all they ugh. all knew. I mean, they just said that. A lot of people were just just obviously heartbroken, but just in shock. And yeah. they knew, though. There were some people that just instantly knew. Yeah. They're, you know? yeah. Um, I guess all the victims um, had looked old and had the same expression, meaning that they had died with pain and fear. That's what one of the people oh were explaining. Oh, my God. Um, That's Jeff, horrific. Yeah. Just, you know, they didn't die, like, peacefully. It's like, if you have that expression on your face, it's just something else. Uh, oh, God. Jeff Lejeunier, I can't say it, but Jeff was basically waiting for his wife, Maurice, and they had said that there had been someone who had worked there. So not only was it students, it was a nurse, um, it was a worker too. So this was the worker, Maurice. Jeff had been, and you could see it on some of the footage of people, they're bringing out bodies into ambulances, and he's just like peering over to look to see people, oh. and you catch him. And um, No. Yeah, so his wife, Maurice had heard that there was a gunman on the loose. So she opened the door that she was at to check if it was locked. I guess you had to open it and double check. Mark Lapine had tried to open the door. Shit. So she's in a tug of war with this fucking asshole and he's pulling, pulling. She fucking wins. She wins. (sighs) But to the left of this door was those windows with the wire. Oh, God. And he shot through it while she was running away and fucking shot her and she died. Yeah. (laughs) This made me so sad. Oh, my God. I just, you know what? That's just really, if you fucking thought, like, I would be like, whew. Like, you know, again, it's like you're, you just, you just had some type of, like, there was oh, a sense of relief there that's the word where I'm you're like, for. I'm safe. The door is locked. You won. You were just in a tug of war and then yeah. you r- go to go away and they shoot you in the fucking back. And you just Ugh. saved people that were in the other room too. Like, Oh. Um, so he was just on a rampage. Even worse. Uh, not even worse. But the women's bodies were taken to the morgue and many of the victims have been shot multiple times. Uh some up to six times, six to nine times at some person uh, and some bodies, some less. The mortician who was on duty had um, had worked there for years. He was the mortician for whatever city or whatever. And uh, he was so horrified and moved that after years of work at the morgue, he never worked again after <gasps> this. Never oh. went back to work. Um, yeah, that must be so traumatizing. I mean, I'm sure he's seen so much, but something of that magnitude to just rock the entire community so hard. Yeah. It must be just completely devastating, even for someone that sees things that are gruesome pretty consistently. 
it's just it's different when it's such a horrific act of violence on so many people at once 14 women you had to just figure out how they i mean you knew how they died but you had to go through all the procedures and and really break it down so that their family had some sense of closure of i don't know there's a lot of people that really just want to know more about what happened you know another victim Anne marie had a best friend who basically said she had died on december 6 when Anne marie died um she never fully recovered. Oh. It's been how long? Uh, 89. She suffers from depression. And I guess for this documentary um, that they had about the, the shooting, um, Anne Marie's mom, you know, said, like, you, you should you should definitely tell your story. Talk about her. Yeah. And she wouldn't go on. Like, after that many years or whatever, um, it's she said. It's still too much. She told the mom that she couldn't do it, um, that it's too difficult, which. I don't know, a lot of people that's healing. Even if a lot of the parents were on the documentary, so it's like if you just imagine if that's their way of coping, it's just damn to lose your best friend like that is. But I think, yeah, I think it is processing is really helpful for a lot of people. So to be able to talk about it with someone in therapy or through a documentary, a lot of people say that that's, I mean, we went over it with like Dave Navarro said that that was just life changing. He felt like he was kind of, had this new beginning for himself because he got some closure out of just covering all the details of his mom's life. Yeah. You going know? through it and really just, I don't know, but again, to each their own. Yeah. Uh, everybody's going to be different. I just feel like it's pretty common that most people say they can kind of focus more on their life after they process it. You yeah. know what I mean? It becomes like more about who they were as a person than how they passed away. Exactly. You know what I mean? Cause how they passed away is so overwhelming until you really fully process it and get it off your chest, mm-hmm. you know? No, totally. And it seems like, I don't want to say, I mean, it just should show you how depressed she was. I yeah. mean, really, like, to not be able to come through when the mom can come through and is urging you to. Yeah. Um, Especially because uh, they were in the same room. You know, everybody's in the same room. They really stuck by each other. Aww. All the victim, uh, the family members of the victims really, really just clung to each other. And even in um, some things they reference saying that I don't even talk to some of my other family members like this, like, Aww. or this, you know, I, I can only relate to you and only you about this, you know? Yeah, of course. Because there's just, you know, very few people that have had that exact same experience. Exactly. That's why support groups are so helpful because exactly. it's very niche. Like you get to talk to someone that's actually been through the exact same thing as you, mm-hmm. that's experienced the same emotions. So if they're the other family members, they know exactly the same kind of specific loss, you know? I don't know why you just said support groups and fight club came to my no. <laughs> Maybe they should start a fight group. I mean, that would lift some spirits, you know? Be able to work through some shit, throw some punches. Another victim, uh, Michelle Richard, Mimi, was just getting close to her father, and he was supposed to attend her wedding. Um, She had died, and I think it was a little bit right before the wedding. He regretted not being closer to her, and he committed suicide almost a year exactly (gasps) later. Oh, it was no. pretty fucking sad. Um, I guess. Oh my god! Remember how we were talking about how you thought men would try and um jump in, and and they yeah. did. Uh, but because some of them couldn't save them, a lot of there was like again this feeling of guiltiness, like just being guilty, like yes. you could have done more. Oh, totally. A lot of people have survivor's guilt, especially in situations like this where they were right next You're to right the victims, there. and they told yeah. you to get out of the way, and you either got out of the way or right. you know, or eventually got out of the way because he made you. Exactly. Yeah. Um, one student was completely shocked and depressed after, and he felt he really carried this guilt. Um, he ended up hanging himself nine oh. months later in his bathroom, and his suicide basically went unnoticed. What? Yeah. Um, to make it even worse, his parents were super sad about this and ended up killing themselves a year later. No. Yeah. And they kind of, which was stupid too, not stupid, but they kind of blamed the shooting, obviously, on his depression, which, duh. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah. but what do you blame? It's just a big chain of events that right. it's just people are dying It just continued to be victims upon victims because it kept emotionally affecting so many people afterwards that couldn't recover. It wasn't just 14 people that died. Right. It was more. And it wasn't just however 10 or whatever that were injured. It's a lot more. Wow. Um, Oh, my God. That's so devastating. So 
I wanted to say the the victims' names, but I can't. But they're all twenty one to thirty one years old. Um, I just got it's Genevieve, Helena, Natalie, Barbara, Anne Marie, Maud, Maurice, Maurice, Anne Marie, Sonia, Michelle, Annie, Annie, and Barbara. And rest in peace to those ladies. But uh, so much better than American names. Yeah, just Maurice. saying. And Maurice is M A R Y S E. I was like Maurice. Mars. Because <laughs> you know we're English, English language. Uh, That's just crazy. But one, uh, one of the moms again of Amory Edward, um, was just talking about how her daughter was a, an accomplished athlete, a linguist, a musician. She played music with her mom, and that's something that they did together. The mom oh. played piano, and Marie played piano together, and she ended up playing guitar too. And they would just kind of jam out and play together, and. Her mom said that she's no longer happy. Like, she cannot possibly be a happy woman after mm. that. So, again, just that cycle. I'm going to cry. <laughs> it's just that cycle of... It just continues. Yeah, it's just super sad. Ugh. For so many people that just, they struggle to recover. Why don't you just, just do paintball? Carried. Why don't you just paintball everyone? <laughs> just paintball the shit out of someone. You might get expelled, but... Go into the middle of the woods, have target practice, Seriously. don't hurt anyone. Put a wig on something if you need to. Go to play. therapy. <laughs> uh, uh, so Get a blow-up doll. Exactly. And another chain reaction, which I think is really weird to me. Um, so remember his sister, Nadia Garvey? Yes. She overdosed on drugs when she was 28. Um, Before the murder or after? I think this is after. After, okay. Um. She was, I guess, the opposite of of Mark. She was like the outgoing party girl, had a good time, had a lot of friends. So it's funny. And she loved women. And she, yeah, exactly. <laughs> All about that puss. And they they both died at their own hands. Oh, one yeah. overdosed and one shot themselves. So they, you know, looking at their, don't fuck up your kids, man. Like, like seriously, look <laughs> the how. The moral of the story. Like you're both don't your fuck kids up died. Your kids. They had terrible. You don't fucking lock your kids in a room with orange juice. I know. I just, I don't get it. And so I guess there's a concert every year to make this a little bit better. This is how they remember them. Um, there's a concert every year to remember the shooting. Um, there's it takes a mem- place like at the school. I think it's near the university, but That's it's the university. Cool. Yeah. Montreal. That would be, you know, it can't, of course, nothing can fix it, but I mean, I think it's good to focus on something that's healing and positive. Exactly. And maybe people that, you know, went through it or whatever could express themselves through whatever art and music and mm-hmm. creativity that could be really helpful. Exactly. And it was because they, they ended up doing a, they put a little memorial at a park near the university. So it is an art piece and it kind of makes the viewer participate, which kind of gets you to um, remember the victims a little bit more. They basically have at the foot of the university of Montreal, um, there's etched in stone. It's kind of like a half moon looking memorial with the names of the women, but it's hard to decipher. You really have to work to look and decipher the names which gets you to – when you're trying to think about the person's name, you're like, uh, Maurice. And then you think about that victim, and then you remember them. So it's kind of interactive in that way. Oh, that's interesting. Um, and all the victim's parents kind of came together, and they, you know, they hang out there, and they really just – that's their grieving process. And they all kind of meet up at this, uh, at this little memorial. So – it wasn't as long as I wanted to be, but it's mostly filled with tears. <laughs> I can't. If you look at the documentary with the the information of the victim's parents, that guy, Jeff, and it's funny how they talk about it because they go to clips of the same victim's mom, sisters, or whatever, and Jeff is like, I have forgiven. You know, I pray every day that he, she has taken my wife. is Because they had just been married for three months, too. So then that's the one, um, Maurice is the one with the door handle. They'd just been married for three months. Wow. Um, so he would pray to God, like, you know, just please, like, take her. And he's like, I just hope that God will just tell me, hey, stop. Like, it's fine. Like, we got her. You know what I mean? Like, oh. it's cool. Um, but then the sisters of another victim were like, no. Like, I'll never forget. Like, I hate him. I will never yeah. forgive him. So it's kind of crazy to see both sides of it. Um, yeah, because there are so many different ways to process the same exact experience. There's a lot of things you go through that are the same and you're the, you know, you're this part of the group of people that have gone through the same thing. Mm-hmm. But 
because everybody's different, you're going to interpret it different. You're going to grieve differently. Like, you're going to feel differently about the murder, yeah. you know? And I believe because this was like the first of its kind in Canada, after this, there were a lot of school shootings. And I guess um, Monique, uh, Monique with me never, uh, never really came out, never commented on anything, never until. I believe this one shooting, I, f- I forgot what shooting it was, but then she came out and was kind of like talking about it and just trying to see what she could do to help, I guess, um, yeah. and break the silence a little bit. But Canada, after this, Canada had a couple of school shootings, which were pretty really? bad. Really? Yeah, there was an Ottawa shooting. Um, yeah, just a bunch of bad shootings and shit. So. Yeah, it does seem bad. like once there's one, you just see the news kind of which explode it's crazy because you would think how we're thinking right now like oh my god that's awful like yeah. i would never want that but someone sees that as an opportunity like right. fuck yeah i want to do that like i fucking hate the people or in inspiration my inspiration or something that's unbelievable to me i don't know what is in people to make you like i can't imagine that i, I can't, can't relate yeah not at all i just mm. i can't put myself in that thought process not one bit like, I want to murder people in traffic. That's, <laughs> that's the only thing. And then I get I over it. I want to murder people in blazer tag. <laughs> I'm never fucking playing with you, man. <laughs> We're about love and peace I here. meant fake murder, man. <laughs> <laughs> Laser murder. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was uh, Mark Lapine, a.k.a. Garby. Uh, and that was the Ecoyer Technologique murder in Montreal. <laughs> But the shooting in Montreal, basically. And wow. that was really fucking sad. That's crazy. And there's part of me that's just like, nothing like that happens in Canada. That's And I know that that's just, that's stupid. I know that's that's not reality. But just in my brain, I think of Canada as so peaceful. You know what's even more stupid? Um, I said, <laughs> Canada, doesn't, Canada doesn't have guns. <laughs> <laughs> like fucking England. You're thinking of Australia. <laughs> is it Australia and England? They just have like batons, right? <laughs> Fuck, I thought Canada was in that group. I never hear about I never hear well, about Well, that's how nonviolent they it are. Is. Yeah, it's just you just don't hear about it and you assume that it just doesn't happen there. Or at least we do because they just have moose fights. <laughs> that's just it. like it's like javelin, but the with humans moose. just have antlers <laughs> and they just try and wrestle each other down. <laughs> Step on each other's cars. <laughs> That's what moose do. My uh, my family's from Canada, and um, my I remember my great grandma and my mom or whatever. They were talking about how a moose. They were driving, and a moose fucking fucked up their car, man. Like they're Whoa. huge. They're like twelve feet tall. Yeah, I'm probably exaggerating, but they're tall. They're yeah, they're big. They're big. So they walked. The moose walked on the car. Fucked up the car. Yeah, just like was like hitting it. You know, I'll show just, you. Yeah, they're really. So it was basically like a jealous ex girlfriend. <laughs> like, yes. Attacking the car. The moose keyed the car. <laughs> And slash the tires <laughs> and put pancake syrup all over. Threw a potato in the exhaust, too. Fucking moose. <laughs> I like how pancake syrup has become our method of revenge now that we've been into Riverdale. <laughs> oh, my God. It's like oh. the only thing. You know what? I'm going to fucking pancake syrup your ass. <laughs> I just want to say, that bitch got sauce. Every time, like, uh. A sweet sauce it's right on your face. Yeah. I. Honestly, it's going to be the new salt, the snail. <laughs> <laughs> snail. Snail. <laughs> I love Riverdale. Does anyone, uh, has anyone watched Riverdale? I know. I feel like I've been so alone in watching Riverdale for the past, what, however long I've been obsessed with it. And now I have someone else that's obsessed with Riverdale You're and I'm so excited. Not alone anymore. And I want to just spread the gospel of Riverdale everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I know how cheesy it looks. I know how cheesy it actually is. Yeah. But it's also a really good murder mystery. They give it that, like, you know, the cover of Twilight? Yes. It looks like that. And yes. that's what bothers me. The presentation is just like, oh, this is cheese ball. Yeah. This is too much. Fuck it. I'm not going to watch it. But then after hearing enough people say, you should check out Riverdale. From different kind of uh, tastes in mm-hmm. TV, I was like, yeah, I'm just going to watch Riverdale. So now I don't know what to do. Mindhunter or Riverdale. I'm pretty sure I'm like four or five episodes in Mindhunter. And 
three to four in Riverdale as of last night. I just started last night. Shit was great. <laughs> it was so good. You were like, oh, just, you know, put an SVU in there too. No, fucking Riverdale all night. And I had to turn it because I was falling asleep, but I was still listening. So, you know, when you just crack your neck to look, you're just like, <laughs> you're in deep pain. What I want to see. And then I ended up, I swear, swear to you, I got up on my elbow, looked at the TV for like four minutes. I was like, I can't miss this. I can't. <laughs> I, okay, now I'm going to try to sleep. I can't turn away. I had to fucking, I had to put on BoJack. <laughs> I can fall asleep to Bojack. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. When I have those instincts to binge watch something, I think I just have to follow that. Yes. Because SVU will be there. You yes. know what I mean? Like, it's not going anywhere. True. So after you're done with Riverdale, you could watch that. You're so right. That's just that's just me. But I enjoy the fuck out of binging. Like, binge watching is my new heroine, you know? I want to binge fuck every ca- character on that cast. Oh. Like you were just saying. You told me that, and I was like, nah, every character? No, yeah, every fucking character. I fucking told your ass. Luke Perry and, oh, Ski Ulrich came up. Like, oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Ski Ulrich, Jugs. Daddy, like son, name- DP. <laughs> good luke perry looks old yeah his you know i always look at people's necks to see their age (laughs) his neck is is looks like it's been through some shit (laughs) so i look like i'm 12 yes oh totally (laughs) tight neck my dad does his muscle exercises like this so you you just clench your jaw and you my dad does that he's like no it it, it gets rid of your chins try it like, fuck you dad <laughs> oh my god yeah he's he's looking real real tore up my dad no <laughs> you fucking luke perry oh god. i was like my dad shits your on dad perry. looks better than luke perry and my dad's 65 or right two, three it's kind of crazy yeah <laughs> shits on luke i'm glad we're in agreement <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know everybody on that cast i know it's cheesy yeah. you know but that the acting's pretty good for the such a cheesy script great. Yeah. it's great when kids are like crying and shit like that i'm like how are the tears coming yeah they're they're good into it. and it's got betty and veronica and archie yeah and josie and her pussycat dolls who are are like if they are cats. They like <laughs> talk like cats and they're like, meh. Like, you know what I mean? Like, they're, you know, they're just purring a lot. Purr. Yeah, they're just cats. Like, we're cat. No, you don't understand. They're like, meh. Like, fuck you, cats. No one, no, one, no one likes you. And then you're like, oh, wait, I like you. And that's how cats go. <laughs> Is it? Right? It's <laughs> a total breakdown of cats. Well, fucking look at me, cat. You want to cuddle? You want to jump on my bed? Don't look at me. You want to sleep in between my legs? <laughs> Oh. Yeah, it's so fucking good. Way yeah, diverse. highly recommend that that fucking show. Yeah, Riverdale, five stars. Get on it. Yeah, and if anybody else is watching, just we that's all we want to talk about is Riverdale. Yeah. so please holler at us. Yes. <laughs> but don't fucking spoil it because I am four episodes deep. I know, right? Yeah, no spoilers. Never mind. By the time this comes out, I'll be done. Right. <laughs> True story. Yes. Oh. And the other thing that's really important to mention. Yes. Is We've been friends for how long now? 10 years. Yeah. It's it's been a minute. Yeah. Right? And I just found out yesterday from someone else, (laughs) you didn't even have the decency to tell me yourself that you've never seen Law & Order SVU. I thought you knew this. This is a game changer. I just assumed, like we both talk about true crime, so I've always assumed that you've like been into that show as much as everybody else Hey, um, how was The Exorcist? <laughs> Dunno, never seen it. <laughs> That's what I thought. It doesn't matter because it's not Law and Order SVU. <laughs> There's not 18 seasons of The Exorcist. <laughs> exactly. I didn't. I've never watched SVU, and specifically, I've never watched Law and Order. I know my mom has always like my mom's addicted. Mom it's just loves so it. crazy because everybody like I don't think I I know anybody else that I could think of that hasn't been super into Law and Order yeah. SVU and it's not something you I guess talk about a lot yeah I don't know because there's so much of it it's hard to be like hey want to talk about this one specific plot line yeah it's not like that okay. you know but it still just seems like I don't know I feel like a lot of the memes I post on our social media are SVU related because like it's them? just so fucking <laughs> fun like I don't know SVU is just this cultural thing everybody knows about and then now I feel oh, like 
I feel like I don't even know you, bitch. Well, I'm going to try and get to know you, bitch. Jesus. <laughs> God. Fuck, man. I can change. It's still there. I like how you're just on board with changing to please I'm, me. Like, immediately. I will Thank change you. for you. What do I got to do? This is the foundation of our friendship. <laughs> me oh thank you love me <laughs> i'm gonna watch svu but also the other half of me that's not feeling like oh my god i don't know my best friend the other part of me is just like <laughs> i'm so excited for you yes because there's so many shows that you're like oh my god i wish i could go back and watch this for the first yes. time and be overwhelmed exactly. with that feeling that's what awesomeness. i was telling the friend that told you i didn't know about svu right. doesn't know breaking bad or Game of Thrones. I was like, you are so right. fucking lucky. I would give so much to just go back and watch it for the first time. Yes. That would be fucking amazing. Mm. Yeah. I love that moment of just getting balls deep in something. Just yeah. realizing it's your newest obsession. Re- yeah, realizing that you fucking love it. Something happens where you're like, I love it. I think I was yeah. hysterically laughing in my room and just giddy when I was watching Riverdale. And I was like, I love it. Like, I just... <laughs> You get them. Oh, Veronica and her mom are so sassy. You tell that bitch. Oh, I was like, get them. Yes. She's I like, love that feeling where you're just like, yes. Yeah. Like, the mom cheering. straight up was like, I got this. And then choose out fucking redheaded bitch. It was so good. Oh, man. Go mom, daughter. So, so there's so many things that you have to look forward to. Yeah. This is, I'm, I'm excited. What's the I'm sad docu- you. documentary you were talking about? Oh. The one that um you said Amos left open. and Oh, uh. I was watching the Khalif Browder story. It's called Time, the Khalif Browder story. Time. I would highly recommend that too. Um, Did he super get time? sad. Yes. Okay. It's Just a guess. six. It's a small like mini series. I think it's like four or six episodes yeah. or whatnot. But it, it was covered in the news, so a lot of people knew about the case. Uh, he was serving time as he was waiting to go to trial because he refused to take a plea for stealing a backpack and he was only 16 years old at the time and he ended up serving three years to await trial because he wouldn't just plead guilty to get a short sentence you know fucking jansport who do you get in trouble for that i thought you get a slap on the wrist i thought you get uh a nope. tardy or whatever no, right it. i don't know <laughs> yeah you'll you'll have to watch it it's crazy <gasps> but i mean backpack? really by like episode one or two i was already just crying okay. it's like to me it's just you know how sad dear zachary is yes. where it's just like yes fucking cry fest yeah. it's now in the number two spot for me okay it okay. was so overwhelmingly devastating can we rename it to time to cry <laughs> right <laughs> cry time <laughs> um yeah i would highly recommend it. that yeah i got a bunch of stuff to do. i have a day off on thursday right so but i like having a lot of different binge options for yeah. different moods because i'm not always in the mood to laugh i'm not always in the mood to cry mm-hmm. you know not always in the mood to learn <laughs> Serious, I'm not. Someday. I know. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I got to research this case. I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. It's uh, time for Riverdale now. Besides Bojack, you know what else I fall asleep to? Huh. Jerk off. World War II stuff. Just oh. all Nazis all the time. <laughs> Throw in some Stalin if you want to. World War II. Anything World War II is the greatest thing to fall asleep so to. So how are your dreams, man? Oh, <laughs> not about Nazis. <laughs> Fuck. They'd be more interesting. They're about dumb shit like boys and <laughs> fucking stupid shit. School. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. So that's been our TV wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> Unintentional, but we're clearly binging some shit. Yes, and you know? it's good. So. It's so good. And we love getting, like we've said before, we love recommendations yes. from you guys. So, I mean, that's the reason I watch Mind Hunters. Mm-hmm. That's the reason I watch The Keepers. Like, there's a bunch yeah. of stuff we've watched. That's all. Yeah, just because listeners that. have been like, hey, check this out. You so, guys fucking rule. Oh yeah, my god. Thank fucking, you for keeping you. our lives awesome. <laughs> Fuck. So with all that said, thank you for bearing with us while we wrap up our current obsessions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe you learned something that you want to check out too. Yeah. Maybe. I don't maybe know. Maybe it's time to cry for you. So. <laughs> maybe. Time to cry. <laughs> So, with all that said, I guess we should wrap up this episode. Yeah. And we want to remind you once again that in our show notes, there's going to be links to resources for mental health and support groups, anti-bullying, a bunch of stuff like that. There's going to be links to our Threadless store where you can get merch like shirts and mugs and housewares, iPhone cases, Mm -hmm. a bunch of different stuff. 
There's going to be links to our research materials and our social media if you want to see sick ass memes, any of the recommendations that us or our listeners make, um, and updates on the stories, updates on our episodes, all sorts of stuff. And then the last thing that's going to be in there is our link to our Patreon. So we wanted to say thank you one more time to Amanda, Tammy, Melodeberger, Melodeberger, uh, Robert, I remember Robert, and Diane. Damn, nailed it. Green eggs and spam. (laughs) (laughs) So thank you so much to you guys for your Patreon support. And I think that's pretty much it for this week. And we'll be back next week with Letter U, University Killings, Part 2. Hey, uh, you complete me. (laughs) (laughs) I love dad jokes. (laughs) (laughs) You ready to chew crime and chill? Yes, it's cold, so. I know, right? We need to snuggle for sure. Bye. Bye. Introducing the Capital One Walmart Rewards Card. Earn unlimited 5% back on everything you buy at Walmart online. It's the perfect card for all your family's hints this holiday season. Like 5% back on the air fryer Grandpa told you about when he fell asleep in his chair. Mm, Didn't fry anything. Or 5% back on the laptop your sister had carolers sing to you. Two turtles on the center laptop for Carrie. The Capital One Walmart Rewards Card. Earn unlimited rewards, including 5% back at Walmart online. What's in your wallet? Terms and exclusions apply. Capital One N.A. Introducing the Capital One Walmart Rewards Card. Earn unlimited 5% back on everything you buy at Walmart online. It's the perfect card for all your family's hints this holiday season. Like 5% back on the air fryer Grandpa told you about when he fell asleep in his chair. Mm, Didn't fry anything. Or 5% back on the laptop your sister had carolers sing to you. Two turtles on the center laptop for Carrie. The Capital One Walmart Rewards Card. Earn unlimited rewards, including 5% back at Walmart online. What's in your wallet? Terms and exclusions apply. Capital One N.A.